Everybody here from Drake Wing Gaming and some of you man on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at come back coming back at you with a new Let's Play series on a visual novel called Light My Way, a kinetic novel by Hadrian Maximus. I'm not sure who that is, but this looks very promising. I like the artwork and such else. I like that it's anime. That's pretty cool. But yeah, y'all, let's go ahead and uh, jump right back in. But actually, let's jump right in. But first off, I just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos, one of which is already out, y'all. <laughs> Tennis Ace. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. And let's go. Or I should say, let's just go ahead and jump in. All right. Let's see what Light My Way has in store for us. What is your name? Sure, we'll go with Lucian. Lucian's a good name. Prologue. Before the war. Oh, cool! When I was a kid, I called it Light. I had no idea how I could. I had no idea how I could call it otherwise. Light was a worm to learn easy enough, like others such as Mom, Dad, and Fox. I was five, and for my birthday at Logborough's, I celebrated with my family and other kids from my neighborhood. My parents got me a big cake, so I blew out the candles wishing for the Beast Battles 2 game. Yay for me, five years old! I got up to get a, get a plate for my cake, but something was off. There was this light around other folk that wasn't going away. I asked my parents about it, but they couldn't make out what I was saying for some reason. I rubbed my eyes a few times, and the light was gone, so I sat down and dug into my delicious cake. My next-door neighbor, Atlas, came to visit... <laughs> Sorry, y'all. It's late. My next door, Atlas. My next door neighbor, Atlas, came to sit by, came to sit next to me. But as soon as he did, I couldn't look at him anymore. His light was so strong, I was blinded in an instant. It didn't stop, no matter how many times I rubbed my eyes, almost scratching them. I ran away from the table and started crying, louder and louder. My mom came quick, asking me what's the matter. I wanted a hug, but her light was much too strong as well. I put my paws on my face, covering my eyes, and wouldn't let go. Everyone kept saying I was mumbling, but I know I spoke the right words. It hurts my eyes to see her light. I said it over and over, but nobody seemed to understand. The party was a buzz, and from then on I was known as the weirdo as the weirdo kid around my neighborhood. <laughs> I was homeschooled by my parents until I was 13. After countless visits to various doctors, I got the darkest tint of sunglasses and wore them everywhere I went. The light was fine when I was alone, kept moving back and forth, but it was alright. Around other folk, though, a different story, but I learned to live with it. My parents took me to Caligenus. My parents took me to Caligenus to see a specialist and got some fancy glasses that I thought made me look cool. When my parents told me I could now start school like any other normal folk, I was super excited. I wanted to show off my glasses and make more friends, since Atlas was the only one talking to me. It was always difficult to be around him with his massive blaze, but it was also worth it. He was there for me since my fifth birthday, so I kind of got attached to him. Maybe a bit too much. I was giddy with excitement as my school year approached. Now that I could well be around other folk, but my excitement didn't last long. I was a new kid, and for whatever reason, some classmates figured it would be fun to see how I would react not having my glasses. I tossed them around, and I couldn't do anything about it. I don't know if it happened on purpose or not, but someone stepped on them. What a way to start my awesome comeback. My parents came. My parents, parents came to pick me up from school. I cried my eyes out on the way home. I haven't been bullied yet again for my eyes. When I was a kid, others used to tease me, but this but this was a whole new level. Freak Eyes was the name I had to bear all throughout that horrid year in high school, too. And once I got a new pair of glasses, it happened again. But this time Atlas stepped in and everyone backed off since the tiger took it upon himself to protect me. I'll admit I wasn't that happy about not being able to fend for myself, but I did get through that last year of middle school unscathed. Oh. When I was in high school, I was walking home from school one evening. But on that particular day, my pace slowed down to a crawl. My feet dragged on the pavement, and not long after, I collapsed to the ground. Atlas saw me from his house when I hit the pavement. He screamed for my parents to come over. I could make out that he was calling someone from his phone. I woke up with my mom and dad holding me and crying, asking me to come back to them. Light was everywhere as usual, but this time it was pulsating towards me. My dad's cyan rays combined with my mother's magenta light floating above me. My familiar own sapphire light came back to me, igniting around my body. I started crying out in pain when the light went through my eyes, which scared everyone. Since they couldn't see what was happening to me, I alarmed them tenfold. It did burn a lot, to be fair. My strength started returning the moment after. In fact, I felt better than I felt in years. The ambulance arrived, and my diagnosis was dehydration. Even though I was right as rain, my parents insisted I should be taken to the hospital. 
Second now, water time. I was discharged the next day without anything more than a bottle of water I got from the doctor and a stern talk about the importance of drinking enough fluids. Thanks, Doc. How about those lights is what I wanted to ask, but I knew better. In time, I realized I needed light from others. I got some from my mom and dad when the mood was good, but that went away fast. My parents weren't able to recharge me again. Chapter 1. Aurora. I'm walking home, exhausted and desperate. A feeling of panic is gripping me, biting at me. What if it happens again? What if I collapse? Will I die this time? What is this light, and what does it want? Since the fateful fifth birthday at Logborough's, I have been grinding my thoughts about what this, what this all means, but with no answer in sight. The warm summer breeze is shuffling through my fur this evening, keeping some of the depressing thoughts at bay. The sun's rays are starting to, di starting to dip behind the tree line. Not enough to make the street dark, but enough to make the dusk fall over the neighborhood. School is out, and most students are either away on holiday or working summer jobs. I'm looking at the houses in my neighborhood as I am getting closer to home. They're all the same. It's a template used in every suburban area I've seen. One could film a TV show here, and nobody would know which suburban town it's placed in. No uniqueness to be found, and although I have a dislike about this, it's home, and home is where you feel safe. At least for me it is. Atlas finished practice later than unusual, I see. He parked in front of his house. We aren't close friends anymore, but we're good neighbors, so to speak. Our usual interactions are limited to saying hi or waving at each other, but tonight I'm having one of my stronger episodes of exhaustion, so I need to make something, anything, happen. He has the brightest light I've ever seen, so he won't mind me taking some, even if he has no idea I'm doing it. Here goes nothing. Hey, Atlas, how's it doing? Oh, hi there, Lucian. Quite tired. Coach has been drilling us hard these past few days. Why are you practicing? Isn't this season over already? Coach asked us if we want to turn pro, so the ones who said yes are getting a head start in case we get into our choice universities. He's looking at me with a curious expression, almost like that time when I collapsed on the street. I can imagine. We haven't talked in years aside from the hey, what's up, thrown out, thrown out when we saw each other leaving our houses. We drifted apart once we both went to high school. He's the popular jock, and I'm the freaky fox with the death clare, according to my classmates. There's no bullying anymore, so they can call me whatever they want for all I care. That's good, right? You've always been on top of your training. Yeah, I guess. It's the working out part that's getting to me, though. Coach is really putting the pressure on. Hell, the results speak for themselves. He's blushing. His light is starting to tingle, growing towards me. I need a little something, anything. Yeah, Coach says a star player should be built like a fortress. His physique is that and more. He's taller than me, a towering castle. He's got sharp blue eyes and his fur looks so damn good, although he came back from practice minutes ago. His chest is wide and heavy with muscle. A smidge of a belly peeks from under the tank top, although he hides it with compulsion at times, tugging on whatever he's wearing. You okay, Lucian? You seem dazed. Are you dehydrated again? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. I'm slightly exhausted from some running I did. My parents should have left me with some food since I couldn't, couldn't get to dinner on time. You want to join me? You used to like my mom's cooking when your family came around more often. Sure. It would be cool to sit around like old times. Right? Come on in, then. <sighs> He's a light vampire. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Water, water time. We started visiting the long things after my incident when I was five, but our dinners became rarer and non-existent. Once I could go to school like every other kid, my dad got a different job and my mom wanted to return to teaching. Most weekends when they were home and not working on either paperwork or grading tests, it became family time between us. Going to the neighbors for dinner wasn't a thing anymore. I linger a few steps behind Atlas, dragging my feet on the ground. He flicks his ears at the noise, so I pull myself together, assuming a more decent pose. As soon as he offers a chair to sit down, I drop myself in it wiped out by the effort it took me to get there. You sure you're alright? You seem off today. I guess I ever did it with the running. So what's for dinner? There must be something in the fridge. You want a beer? I shouldn't. Oh, come on. I know it could dehydrate you, but here's a glass of water before. We'll perk you up. Maybe get you out of this foul mood you're in. I told you I'm tired from running. You're not even wearing running shorts. Oh, well, this is embarrassing. Jeans aren't comfortable for running now, are they? Excuse me. I'll take one, I guess. Good choice. You'll feel a lot better by the second or third or maybe fourth. 
Aren't you supposed to not drink alcohol when you're training? Isn't it bad for your muscles? Kind of. But it's the weekend, and I'm in chill mode. Plus, nobody will know if you don't say anything, right? His laughter made me chuckle. He's a big goofball. I saw him drunk a couple times with his friends in town. Aurora isn't that big of a place, and he's hard to miss. Fun guy to be for around for sure. <laughs> Food's done. Dig in. The food looks delicious, the way he prepared it. The way he prepared it, even if it was only heated up in the microwave. I down the water as Atlas looks at me, giving me a content smile. This dehydration story is ridiculous. But there's no point in trying to convince folks otherwise. Ouch! It's hot from the microwave! Well, move it around, or do you want me to blow on it for you, little cub? His light flared up when he said that, and my tail prickled. I'm on the right track. You say again, muscle tiger? Eat your food, runt. His nose is red. He turned on the TV. I assumed to escape the embarrassing comment. The evening news are on. Two young adults were charged today with the devouring of one of their work colleagues? What the fuck? The criminals publicly declared allegiance to one of the extremist groups known as the Sacred. I hear the click of the remote again. Only this kind of shit in the news nowadays. I want a relaxed evening, not doom and gloom. I totally get you. The news is always about something bad, so more folk tune in. But those devourers, why do they do stuff like that? We've had lab meat for decades now. Beats me. Isn't life better now having supplements hundreds of times better than real meat? I mean, look at me. There's no way I could be this fit without lab meat. I'm certainly both shuddered at the thought of eating another folk. There's a lot of crazy in this world, though. However, my concern lies elsewhere right now. Some folks are weird like that. So, anyway, how's your girlfriend? Atlas almost spilled out his beer. Uh, Chrissy? I don't know. Busy with stuff for uni, too, I guess. His light stopped and retreated for a second. I figured he'd be into that. I've seen him for i have seen him over the years with multiple girls. And now with his latest, the not-so-charming cheetah girl, Chrissy. I'm sure I've seen her around here more than, few, more than a few times. Hmm. Maybe they're having a rough patch. Stressed with the admissions and all that. Food's great, by the way. What meat is this? Mom's, uh, mom buys Biscor stuff. Their labs make the best meat in her opinion and mine. Either that or the beer is kicking in for you. Speaking of which, uh, do you have another? Uh, thirsty all of a sudden? He throws me one from the fridge, and to my surprise, I catch it in one paw. Must have gotten some power back when he flared at the compliment I gave him earlier. Won't your parents mind? That we're drinking their beer, I mean? It's my beer. We're good. My dad maybe lets me have a sip once in a blue moon, and I've been 18 for a while now. But then again, Atlas is about twice as big as me, and his parents are easygoing. Somewhat rich, too, which helps. It hasn't been a while since Atlas and I last talked about last talk like this. Second, y'all. Water time. Want to go to my room and play some Beast Battle 6? For sure. What's your main? Ha! <laughs> I'm not giving you the advantage already. He read me like a book. Not bad, Tiger. Oh, hello, Lucian. How have you been? Damn, she's tall. Tall, it's all about as tall as a damn sun. Jeez, girl. Good evening, Mrs. Miss Longfang. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm good. I'm open to getting into a close by into a close by university, so I want to travel far. Yeah. Yes, of course. But you'll get in without a doubt. Thank you, Mrs. Longfang. Atlas, have you cleaned your room? Mom, I'll take care of it if I have to. If you have to, look, you have guests. See what I have to put up with, Lucian? We'll be in my room playing some video games. Come on, Lucian. It was nice seeing you, Miss Longfang. Don't be a stranger, Lucian. You know you can visit any time. Pretty hot mom. <laughs> Atlas starts telling me his parents want to help him save up so he can buy his own place rather than rent of the, the rent of the basketball thing doesn't work out. They also want him to feel like he earned his way through life, so he should work also. So he should also work on it, work for it. It's quite nice of them and responsible. His room is different than what I remember from long ago, but it's to be it's to be expected. Dumbbells, a workout bench, and clothes everywhere. I'm certain the T-shirt I set on has been worn multiple times without it, without it being washed. The musk invades my nostrils, and my jeans are staring at starting to pitch a tent. I'm embarrassed at my reaction. I've had a crush on Atlas since I was a kid, but I've never gotten the feeling that he would be into me the same way. Atlas keeps excusing himself because of the mess. I nod, trying to get myself under control. He shoves everything he can he can find laying around can find laying around the floor into a closet, and sits next to me on the bed, grabbing a controller after turning on the console. Give me that one. It's the one I use all the time. What? 
You can't find me with a different controller. Let me try. What? You can't find me with a different controller? I look down and see scratches on. He clawed at it a few times. I don't recall him being a sore loser, but then again, long time, no chats. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!